Well, morning to you once again, and thank you so much for being with us here on Morning at NTV. Into our Kickstarter this morning, where we get to look at the sustainable development through science and technology. Now, when you look at people around the world, they are continuously affected by shocks from health emergencies to economic crisis, from social conflict and war to natural disasters, as you saw in Katonga most recently. Moreover, global economic interdependence creates increasingly complex and unpredictable threats that can be derail the progress towards SDGs. Now science, technology and innovation have a critical role to play in many dimensions. Digital technologies have empowered and given voice to people. Innovation results in economic di diversification which have increased the ability for economies to adapt to shocks and also the new technologies that are being used for resource management and could help in decoupling the economic development from environmental degradation. Now this morning I'm joined my Dr. Savannah Noagaba, who's the head at STEAM Festival, and we also do have Roderick, he's a researcher, and they'll be giving us more knowledge about the SDGs and the impact of science, innovation, and technology. I'll start with the Dr. Hasef. Good morning to you, Dr. STEAM, as I've had <laughs> your cold. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to you. How are you? Very well. Mm. I'm uh, Savannah Noagaba that uh, has received a new name, Dr. Steam, because of this festival that we have started at Chambogo University. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Mathematics, very proud teacher of mm -hmm. mathematics, and I enjoy it, although that is one of the things that we want to demystify mm -hmm. during this festival. I'm coordinating this festival, and I'm happy to be here this morning. Okay, Thank all you. right, and uh, Mr. Sacha? Oh, thank you so much. My name is Roderick Muhumure. I am a student at Chambogo University doing Bachelor of Environmental Science, Technology and Management. I am a proud climate activist and also an innovator. I love thinking beyond what the ordinary man can say, like we can do. I believe we can do it and this is an opportunity having STEAM Festival for me to transform communities okay. to develop the world. They have inspired me to do an introduction of myself. I'm Priscilla Regina Neloga, a mm. proud host of Morning at <laughs> 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 Okay, so away from the light of it, looking at science, technology and innovation, what do they have to offer in line with the achievement of the SDGs? I, 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 I don't think... Uh, I don't think that uh, looking at what we went through during COVID-19, I think everybody is aware of what science, technology, and innovation can bring on board. And uh, in fact, not just science, technology, and innovation, but also thinking about th what the social sciences bring on board. Because COVID was able to teach us that there are things that technology can do, but there are things that technology will not be able to do, and you need the human person mm -hmm. in, in there to fix. And uh, I would want to think that this is what Uganda celebrated because we are a community of people, a community that brings technology and people together. Mm -hmm. Now, this festival is celebrating what science can bring on board. And unfortunately, we realize that uh, a lot of science has been done that could benefit people, but many people are not aware of this. And the festival is a platform that has been created to bridge this gap, mm. to bring communities to us who create the knowledge, who do these innovations, so that we can see the value in there. And I would not want to cheat for us in terms of what is there. Mm. I think I would want to invite everybody to come to the festival mm -hmm. and see for themselves what actually technology can do, what science can do, what these innovations can bring on board. Okay, so this is under the assumption that we know what STEAM is about, but we don't. <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to you, Roderick. Uh, yes. What is STEAM and what is its purpose and mandate? All right. Like STEAM, uh, that one is an, can I say, acronym. an acronym mm -hmm. for science, science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics. Previously, uh, the first edition of STEAM, we had chosen A to represent agriculture. But later we realized that the world needs a uh, hexagonal, let's say, academic world, whereby we have arts and also sciences, mm -hmm. and agriculture lies under sciences. So we decided to directly bring the art students on board, because if you're talking of innovations, let's look at this amazing art piece, the mm -hmm. table here. It's developed by people in the arts sector, mm -hmm. not just the scientists. Yes, I will try to measure these things, the dimensions, but the design and everything, interior design and all that, it is from the arts. So these people are key in what we innovate.
And even you may come up with maybe, let's say, building, but these people have a great role they play. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring them on board. Mm -hmm. So that is what STEAM is all about. And under the theme, we are trying to demystify science, technology, and innovation for community transformation. What is to demystify? That is the first question. We are trying to speak out the scientific language or the innovative mind in a way that the community can be able to embrace and acknowledge. Most cases, we come up with solutions or ideas for people, but the people do not own them. Mm. These ideas we and take... And also, you come up with them for yourselves because Thank you're you. innovators. You want to create something, but it's mm. not directly relational mm. uh, to the communities that you want to serve. Yes. Mm. Thank you mm. so much. Mm. Now, in STEAM, actually, this is, I can say, the best opportunity we have got in the, mm, can I say in the country, yeah, and the whole world to enable the young brains to be able to come up with innovations that are not just for them, but also for the community. Mm. One, mm. we do trainings. So these trainings first go on ground. We teach people how to be able to communicate to the societies. So that when I'm developing my own prototype, it is talking to the community. Mm -hmm. And I engage with the people, I get feedback, and then I am able to share the development or the solution are brought mm. for the problems of people and they will truly embrace it. Okay, all right. Doctor, science, technology and innovation have actually had a historical impact to what we call uh, solving solutions. I mean problems in society as he has mentioned. Uh, we've looked at the increased modernity and consumption of it over time. COVID-19 really opened up our eyes mm. <laughs> to how important the balance is between the sciences and the arts. So with uh, what we have as the donor assistance coming through the identity the financing the scaling when it comes to science and te technology before COVID-19 I think it was just major and bare minimum then the president paid attention to it now they started to uh, invest more in science and technology and developments at the end of the day we want to better understand what is the role and her bridesmaids in court have to play in enhancing development across the bar one of the challenges that we have had, depending on donors for everything that we do in terms of technology and innovation, has been that even as a researcher, when you get, for example, funding to do a certain uh, project, you find that in the application that you make, there are certain terms and conditions that the donor is interested in. What are some of those conditions and that have uh, been present? For example, um, if, if, for example, maybe there is a, a donor X that is working on a, a, a specific product and they are looking for researchers who will look at that product, you find that in terms of the protocols that they require you to, to use, they would be interested in looking at how you cite information that has been done mm -hmm. by other researchers across the globe. But then you realize that at, um, in our own country, maybe nobody has done anything of this kind. So it means that everyone you will benchmark with will be from a context mm. that is not ours. So as a result, because you need the funding, you have to tailor your protocols and whatever you will use and whatever you will do to what has been done wherever the donor is coming from. And as a result, you find that we struggle to get tailor-made yeah. solutions mm. for our own mm. communities so because all the benchmarking mm. is actually done the other side. Okay. And that is why the STEAM Festival is intentionally looking at homegrown solutions because mm -hmm. we know, for example, our students at Chambogo University, I have moved around and seen very many projects that could actually be rolled out and scaled and actually become solutions to this country lying on shelves. And the reason they are lying on those shelves is one, maybe because the, our students and maybe ourselves, we, we, we have not appreciated what we can actually bring on board. Two, maybe because of the funding, as we have talked about. Three, maybe we don't know how to actually bring these to our communities and have them be appreciated. Mm. Because we have also seen some, for example, solutions that are homegrown, but people fail to appreciate them because we are used to getting things from the outside mm. world. Must have the endorsement mm. of the white man. Yes. Exactly. So the STEAM Festival is there to actually expose mm -hmm. the, the Ugandans, the young Ugandans, the next generation of scientists, mm -hmm. that we can actually grow our own innovations that can solve our own problems, and they will be well contextualized. And in fact, uh, maybe some of the solutions that have been uh, appreciated sometimes have remained appreciated among the communities that have gone to school.
But what about those who have not gone to school mm -hmm. or those who have stopped somewhere and do not understand the scientific language, the research language that we use in institutions of learning? So that is why the STEAM Festival comes to actually demystify. When we talk about demystifying, we want to run away from the big terminologies that we use in our research fields and bring it to simple English. If you can interpret your research in yeah, Uganda. I, I thought doctors, you, mm. you pride in that big language. <laughs> this is what you, now, you know. Unfortunately, you <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> many of us do. I am glad to say mm. that I don't. Mm. In fact, mm. I tell, pe I, I'm a mathematician as I've said before, yeah. I tell people that mathematics that does not relate to my students' everyday lives is not worth teaching. Mm -hmm. I want to bring it in the context of what they experience every day. In fact, when I teach my students, I tell them, we are not here to chop numbers, as m and many of you have done. Mm. We are here to tell stories of mathematics that touch our lives. And I can assure you, my students have enjoyed okay, my lesson. Now I want to enroll well, for your class. <laughs> way, like, but yes, please. It is so interesting that I felt I felt like I had lost all, I had lost it all in mathematics mm -hmm. until when I met her with a PhD in math and I had bad bad can I say bad moments with math at, mm -hmm. at high school uh, so we all did and it came <laughs> down to the teachers yeah. yeah so when I met her and then she told me about it and how we could have actually learned to understand the math and apply it in our daily oh. lives I now feel like maybe I should go back and redo high school oh no so maybe you should speak <laughs> into the the fact that there's uh, curriculum adjustments here and there mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you could do some research to guide the ministry of education uh, to better enhance uh, some of these methodologies that we are talking about anyway uh, let's come back to homegrown solutions they also mm -hmm. come at a cost that's True. the honest truth True. Uh, government won't give you the money you need mm -hmm. uh, neither will it give it to you in time we're looking mm -hmm. at budget cuts left right and center mm -hmm. uh, so as i come back to you dr that as uh, uh, Roderick uh, in your perspective from where you stand mm. how do you then intend to have funding for these homegrown solutions all right uh, as me what well, I'm a researcher so I've already started the journey I know what it means but as team coming on board it is going to link academia industry and policy makers why is government not giving people money in time that is where the question of policy comes in. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is very hard for us to develop these solutions. But I believe if at all we do enough education through STEAM Festival, people are going to be able to get these innovations that need low cost. Like how do we be able to appreciate a technology that is not necessarily a multi-million project, but rather a small project that ex directly ex uh, bring solutions with to the communities that we have. One thing I will tell you that I've experienced is uh, in most cases you find the projects we are having or we are developing are not indigenous. They are not targeting the local man. And mm -hmm. even though they were targeting the local man, you find we do a lot of benchmarking, as she was saying, abroad. Mm -hmm. But the only way to get uh, the funding we need in time is through now getting the researchers, that's the academia, the industries, and also the corporate companies, and also the government. That's why if at all we all come to the same table mm. and we speak, trust me, everything will develop. One, we are the one people are saying, like, let's buy Uganda, build Uganda. Mm. How are we going to do it when we are not actually giving money to these people? Yes, budget cuts are there. We, and we acknowledge them, but where are we prioritizing and why are these budget cuts coming mm. on board? Mm. It's because we are not investing in our own local capacity and we are being forced to expend much on buying imports, like on importing instead of rather developing our local capacity to export. Because if we, exp if we develop our local innovations and we start exporting them, trust me, all budgets will have to again mm. go back to the level. Mm. So I believe that the policies that we have in Uganda currently are the problem. But STEAM comes to engage the policy makers. Like, we can come on the same table and develop our local capacity, and then the country will develop. Maybe a quick one on this. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the language that policy make, most of the policy makers speak, it is different from what we speak in academia. We think in terms of very many years, we think in terms of long projects, then plus the big words. Mm -hmm. Now, the STEAM Festival comes to actually make sure that that gap is bridged. One, if I am, for example, an MP, and you want to bring a solution to my community, 
My interest is in how quickly can this solution reach my people so that mm. I am re-elected in the next uh, elections. <laughs> so the problem with us as researchers, we want to speak in terms of 10 years and then we speak of uncertainties. I mean, it's the structure that you've been given. It's <laughs> and that is why it must change. <laughs> You're also change. following a, a prototype. Uh, and that is why copy and paste in terms, in terms it, And that is what we need to unlearn. Mm. And the STEAM mm. Festival has come to actually train our researchers to unlearn these. So as he talked about, part of what we are doing is training researchers in science communication. But then if you're going to train researchers, mm. then that means that you're going to um, undo a lot of things that we have been adopted to, uh, I guess, because of uh, uh, colonization of the education system. That is very true. And uh, localize it for Uganda. So now, speaking of localization, let's go back to localizing funding. Uh, yeah. I mean, even the corporate companies will have budgets, by the way, yes. and uh, it will have to be their interest. How where much, do they benefit? where do they benefit <laughs> from? Exactly. So if we are to, you know, do away with the corporate companies and government, how do we localize funding further? Uh, I want to believe that uh, uh, maybe one of the challenges that we have had is that when you're running a project or when you're working on a, uh, on, on a solution, we want to think about the solution as a whole. Mm -hmm. But these solutions can actually be phased according to how much we can afford. Mm -hmm. Because when we want to start billion, uh, I mean bi a billion dollar project or solution, uh, in our local context, we know that we will not be able to get that money unless we have an external hand help. And even if you get the money externally, it still comes in phases either way. It still comes mm. in phases. So learning to phase these projects and having the bigger picture and you know that we can start with this and it will be able to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Next, maybe after five years, we can add this portion and now the solution will be bigger and we'll cater for A, B and C. Mm -hmm. And then later we add another portion and then we are able to solve the whole thing in totality. Okay. You see, well, the president wants uh, young people to be independent of all this disease yes. of dependence. <laughs> Actually, so that's uh, why I want to further think? supplement on what she's saying. Mm. You realize that for a country to develop, one thing we need to first unlearn the things that we have been colonized with. And that's where the concept of patriotism comes mm. in. And also, how do we be able to allocate our priorities? That's what I was talking about. Yes, institutions are there, research, academia, the Every s everything and all the systems are in place, running smoothly. But the challenge is, where do we allocate the little resources that we get? We can get the money and then we can put it into our allowances and what? But what if we reduce our allowances? Now that's where the question of patriotism mm -hmm. comes in. And then we allocate it to research. We can forego eating today and then we celebrate have tomorrow. You, have you heard the saying of your money is our money, my money is my money? <laughs> it applies to <laughs> politics. <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch <laughs> their money. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of the politicking in mm -hmm. all of this, um, he talked about policies, and he said policies are the problem. But yet I'm meant to believe that the policies were implemented to solve a certain problem at True. time X. So True. how then do they become a problem, doctor? I think uh, if I heard very well, the policies may not necessarily be a problem. But if policies are not evidence-based, then they become a problem mm -hmm. because we could wake up and uh, claim that something is not right in this room. But unless you have done research to confirm that this is actually a problem, whatever you will be doing as a solution, or even if you put a policy in place as a solution, mm -hmm. it will be based on a few individuals' experiences. And, and that should not always create a policy. Now, this is why the festival comes on board, to bring mm -hmm. the policy makers and the researchers together. So that when we have anything that we want to make a policy about, mm -hmm. we first do the background check, we do the research, so that we make evidence-based mm -hmm. decisions and policies for the betterment of this Okay, country. so what evidence-based solutions have come out of the previous editions, Roderick? Our the previous editions, we had students exhibit several innovations. One, it was uh, an incubator, mm. like a mobile incubator. This was a student of the university using his own resources to develop a, a, a simple prototype whereby it was targeting mothers in local communities. Who, uh, like let's say in most cases they give birth mm. to maybe premature. Yes, yes. and then they have so to apply yes. the whole and system yes. just keeping them warm in a certain corner. And the present or existing solutions are very expensive and are found in most urban areas. Now, this one was mobile and was working on battery. Mm. And 
very cost effective. But now, where is it now? At least we are trying to harmonize. We see if the uh, that's why I was talking about the industries and government. If they can come on board and develop such solutions, you find they actually solve the healthy problems mm. that we are having. How many people are dying? That is infant mortality rate, basing on the lack of incubators into our societies. But you see, the question then begs, do mm. we have the industries that can then support the science technology development that we're talking about? True, True the industries are there, but I can, that's are why you can there? say, yes, they are there, but the problem is that we researchers sometimes, we tend to avoid them on the questions of copyright something. Mm. Yes. And wanting 100% yes. of your research. <laughs> And that is why this festival has uh, <laughs> something on uh, part of what we'll be discussing mm -hmm. in the second sub-theme that talks about uh, uh, sustainable dialogues between policy uh, research and industry is to look at the IP issues, intellectual property issues. Mm -hmm. Are they the ones that have actually restricted this relationship? Are they the ones that have kept all our innovations on the shelves? Mm. So that is part of what we'll be discussing during the festival. Okay. Maybe something about the industries that are in this, this place. We have um, Uganda Research Institute, URI. And URI, I, I want to believe it has the, the most so sophisticated um, machines on this continent for actually developing prototypes. Now the issue is many people do not know that it is there. I was also shocked to know when I went to visit and had a tour around to see what they really have there. Maybe now people come from South Africa mm. to come and use our mm. things here to develop prototypes and, and actually go <laughs> because back. Because the, the uh, URI is getting money from the South Africans. For you it ought to be free but it will come with an expense which has to be supported by government funding. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the South Africans it's a private arrangement for which they can pay for and afford. So those dynamics you we also have to understand that they do exist in uh, you know weakening the, the, the arm of science and technology and innovation I, I want to believe um, I remember we had a, a chat with the, with the w with the managing director and he was telling us that these services are there you can actually come and you apply for for some kind of um, fellowship to actually go in there and incubate and mm -hmm. it is not as expensive as we think. I think when we, what we read around sometimes discourages, f discourages us from trying. But actually, if you went there, y you would find that the, the, the environment is different and it is not as expensive as one would think. And in fact, if we really, if we really would want to develop these local solutions, why not actually try these initial basic investments mm -hmm. for the sake of the future that we are looking for. When, when you had that interaction with the Research Institute, did they give you the challenges they face in actually having some of these things availed to researchers like Roderick? Yes, of course. Of course, some of the challenges is that um, I in Uganda, uh, many people want to remain babies for yeah. forever. Mm. So when some of these young incubators get in there, and they start producing uh, very viable products for, for the market, mm -hmm. they do not want to leave and that has been one of the challenges. So, and when they don't leave, mm -hmm. then they fail to create space for mm -hmm. others to come in. But of course, uh, as a parent, he also expresses the fact that you cannot just send away someone who mm -hmm. has just started uh, incubating mm -hmm. a baby okay. and has started celebrating. So those are some of the challenges. And of course, the, the maintenance of this uh, machinery and all of that. But I think if we could embrace this and actually know that it is there, this could be a great deal for this country. Okay, all right. Um, Roderick, uh, yes. we definitely are going to be a taking a break, but when we return, uh, we'll be looking into citizen science and the impact of that on society today. Do stay with us. You're watching Morning at NTV. So, this is where it all began. Those styles weren't working. So we made something better. And you didn't stop there. We knew we weren't changing the world with our clothes, but the women who wear them might. And you went from playing with dolls to, to becoming, becoming a fashion, fashion powerhouse. We see you great. Katukuyambe, Hokusei Sam, with APSA Business Banking. Speak to us about how we can help you get it done. That's Africanacity. That's APSA. 
Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic is back. Bigger and better in your area. The Saturday Monitor in partnership with Naro and NTV brings you the 31st Farm Clinic in Barara. Focusing on dairy, goats, bananas, coffee and passion fruits to be held at the Mbarara Zono Agricultural Research and Development Institute, Mbazade. Come join us on Saturday, 27th May, 2023 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. For exhibition or more information, please call 0777 53004 or 703 18 1983. Sponsored by Bank of Uganda, Stanbic Bank, NSSF and Zoetis. Seeds of Gold. Smarter farming for bumper harvests. The spirit of prophecy that is here, it is the intention of him to get you connected to our fellowship with us that your life may become more and more clear intentionally. You see, some of these things do not happen to people because they do not have the intention of those things. And the reason as to why they do not have the intention of those things is because they even don't know that such things exist. There is not any man, prophet, psychic, whatever you may call them, that has stood in front of masses and has been that detailed and that specific about things year in, year out, and you have seen them before you. Prophet Elvis Mbonye, the prophet with an unmatched record of prophetic fulfillments. On the next episode is brought to you by Prokov. Feel the positive energy. On the next episode... I can't keep lying to myself. I can't let you keep lying to yourself. Lying? What are you talking about, Louis? About this craziness. The craziness that we're dating? I wish... I, I, I swear, I wish I could, but... I can't. I No, I... I can't, Mikhail. We just really want you to be happy. Oh, my babies. You two really are special. Available in a 20ml I just took a rough boom and I know it won't flop. Rock Wolf, feel the positive energy. You're watching Morning at NTV. Insightful and inspiring discussions here looking at science, uh, technology and innovation and how they can actually help in achieving SDGs. Now, uh, talking to Dr. Savannah, also known as Dr. Steam, uh, we've had steam, 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 we have not <laughs> seen the steam, so help us understand steam and uh, what exactly steam is going to be doing. Now, during this STEAM festival, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. No, I thought we were going to sit in the sauna somewhere and just steam. Yeah, <laughs> even that will be there. We will be steaming, right? in fact. <laughs> but, of course, that will be seen at different stalls mm -hmm. uh, of different exhibitors. Mm -hmm. We will be having exhibitions from different faculties within Chambogo University. Mm -hmm. We also have stalls for our alumni. We want people to know that when this, our students leave Chambogo University, wherever they go, they have developed skills uh, for, for, for community service, mm -hmm. and they're actually doing that. So we, we also have stalls where they're exhibiting what they are doing. We are also creating space for, for small and medium enterprises, industries that are interested in exhibiting with us. Please get in touch with us, because this is an opportunity for us industries to targeting? dialogue. Any industries, mm -hmm. because we are demystifying everything around science, technology, and innovation. And I believe any industry can figure out where they fit. Okay. And we want to tell these stories and share these stories and be able to see how we can collaborate mm -hmm. to make Uganda a better place for us. We will also have panel discussions uh, where we'll be discussing topical issues. We have three sub-themes this year. One is around environment. I mean, recently we had... Um, something about having dustbins in our cars and many people have rejected that 
why they do not understand the relevance of this and this is why and this is why we have this sub theme we want all of us to see what there is for each one of us in actually protecting our environment mm -hmm. the other sub theme as we talked before is around sustainable dialogues beginning those sustainable dialogues between the three big bodies of any country policies industry and the, the universities, the researchers. And uh, finally, uh, Ugandans are aware of the new lower secondary school curriculum. And uh, I know many of, of, of us are interested in seeing our children come with 90s and all of this. And this mm -hmm. curriculum is saying mm -hmm. you are either basic, moderate, or excellent. So you have one, two, or three. And many of us have rejected it. But maybe we need to demystify this curriculum for people to appreciate what there is for us in Uganda. Is it really what we need? And that is why our third sub-theme is looking at strategizing for equitable and innovative education. Of course, we can no, never talk about education without equity. We want to see where the girl child sits. We want to see where persons living with disabilities sit in this new curriculum, in this innovative education that we are talking about. So come one, come all. Do not miss. Come and see innovation in action. Well, that would be an interesting uh, panel discussion because uh, most recently the Directorate of Industrial Training has been halted uh, just to reassess things with the lower secondary curriculum. Uh, so when is team happening? Uh, target participants and uh, are, are we paying? Oh, thank you so much. One, there's nothing like paying. This team festival is organized by Chambogo University and it is to develop the country because our motto goes knowledge and skills for service now this is time whereby we are giving service to the community it will be on the 24th of may up to the 26th of may so those are three days of exhibitions three days of gaining knowledge and also we are going to have a, a pre-steam conference on the 23rd of may please if you can spare time please make it there and also students out there are you in high school please we know it is going to be in holiday so you can come, come and be inspired, not on the course or maybe combination that you're doing, mm -hmm. but come, just come with yourself because you are a resource. You as an individual are a resource and come and see what people have done so that you can benchmark and be able to realize and you realize your capacity. You know, like, okay, I, it's not just about paperwork. Mm -hmm. It's about what can I do? We are living in a gig economy mm -hmm. whereby your ability, someone will call you be like, hey, uh, Miss Priska, I, Prisla, I know you do this, come and help me here. Yes, you have a job, but there are gigs that we do. So this can be your gig. Please make sure you come. And students, also researchers, people, also professionals, and even you, I'm inviting you. Please yeah, be I'll there. I'll come to moderate. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> I've already gotten my gig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and, and the mm. chief guest for our festival mm. is the first lady herself. So please come and let us celebrate science together. You see, this is a festival. Mm -hmm. And in a festival, you talk about dancing. We you dance. cannot talk about a festival without dancing. Mm. In fact, if there was time, we could have danced for Are you, you about the song? STEAM <laughs> festival, because we even have a STEAM dance, yes, yes. a STEAM song. So mm -hmm. please come. Let's dance and celebrate science together okay. all right uh, also in closing uh, you did mention something about environment and conservation mm -hmm. how does science technology and innovation actually blend in into environmental conservation uh, everything environment is science because we are talking about I remember when we were in, in, in primary school we used to, science is the study of living and non-living things mm -hmm. and these are the things that are in our environment mm -hmm. so definitely if we are thinking about uh, uh, innovative ways of conserving our environment already the word innovative is there mm -hmm. we are looking at climate smart agriculture we are looking at um, maybe not putting a lot of fumes out there from our cars that actually uh, sort of uh, um, make our environment mm -hmm. not good for us and even for all other animals and species that we, we we live with so yes you cannot talk about environment and you don't think innovative ways of actually keeping this environment. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. everything about the environment is science, is technology, is innovation. Okay, Roderick, if I want more information, mm -hmm. someone is listening, they want to participate or be engaged in one way or another, mm -hmm. they need more information. Where can get? Where can they get oh, that information? This more information can be gotten from Chambogo University website or the Chambogo University contacts. You can also reach out to, to Dr. Savannah or oh, I. I'm on social media, mm -hmm. Roderick Muhumwe, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Me, I can do that, but she may not be. And I would be very <laughs> glad even to give out my phone number because yeah, okay. I will be happy to, to, to guide in case any of you have questions. Uh, you can reach me on 0775 
Okay, all right. Uh, we do have Stephen Bide who is on ground. Um, he has been able to maneuver his way to the Katwanga Bridge where, of course, um, the last 48 hours it has gone under turmoil, uh, brokenness here and there. You do have uh, the <laughs> a lot of nature that has been distorted around there. 